We are ministering on one of my favorite subjects, unlocking the supernatural. Last week, Wednesday, we dealt with getting rid, right, or doing away with the marine spirits, dealing with the marine spirits. But today, we are dealing with unlocking the supernatural. Somebody today, by the Spirit of God, you begin to move in a way that you have never moved in before. Your eyes will open. Your ears will be awakened. And there is one secret to it. The supernatural. It is, it, it is like a room full of tools. And that room, once you get in there, you'll be able to do whatever you want to do. But you can't just get to a room without a key. And you need to have the right key. So we are not just unlocking the supernatural. We are giving you a key to unlock that room. I want us to um, deal with this in a way that we have never dealt with it before. Say with me wherever you are, unlocking the supernatural. And of course, it is in the book of Job. And I want us to read chapter 38. And if we were to go to a verse, New King James will do for me. New King James will work perfectly. We usually read from King James, but New King James will do. So 38, and I want us to read verses 19. Where is the way? Right? Where light dwelleth, and as for darkness, where is the place thereof? Meaning, darkness has a home. Light has a dwelling place. The reason why you won't hear what I'm saying is because as a junior believer, you have been taught on living creatures to be angels. But living creatures are not limited to the angelic. Whenever we talk about living creatures, we are not just talking about angels. But listen, because you are a babe, or some of you have not been taught as yet. Because when it comes to the things of God, you only travel to the direction of what you know. What you know becomes your world. And one thing I know about God is that he cannot do beyond the revelation you have. So your revelation of God limits God. So if you want God to do certain things that you have asked him about and is not doing and asked him for and is not doing, the problem is not with God. The problem is with your revelation. So if you have not been taught, you will not know. So whenever we are talking about living creatures, we're not just talking about angels. Light is one of them. Darkness is one of them. And we'll go deeper as I explain because I don't want to talk about that too much, but I want to talk about the supernatural. So here... A question is asked, where is the way where light dwelleth? Meaning, show me the direction where light dwells. We are talking about the dwelling place, the house of a light. And not only that, it goes deeper to speak about darkness, meaning darkness as a whole. Are we together? Because if you know where somebody lives, you can visit them. If you know where somebody lives, you can go there and lock the door. So if darkness has a home, light has a dwelling place, meaning there is a place where darkness lives. The reason why witches are more powerful than Christians is because witches have gotten hold of a revelation that Christians should have gotten hold of. So they know where darkness lives. But you don't know where light lives. You see, a gun 
is as powerful in the hands of uh, a thief as it is in the hands of the owner. I will say that again. An intercontinental ballistic missile, a machine gun, is as powerful in the hands of a thief as it is in the hands of the owner. You can have a gun, but if a thief reaches it, finds it before you, he can kill you with what belongs to you. So what witches do is they use the revelation that Christians should be having against Christians. Satan uses the revelation that you, you should be operating in against you. Say with me, unlocking the supernatural. You see, I feel in my spirit, I should teach you something very deep. But the way you are looking at me, you are saying to me, Apostle, we are not ready for this. Just teach us a Sunday school sermon. Because if you are going to unlock the supernatural, you cannot unlock the supernatural by milk, using milk. You need solid food. Say, so talk to me, Apostle. Now, so here we see that there is a place where if you can get the right coordinates, the right address, you land in the house of light. You land in the house of darkness. Whenever we talk about witchcraft, it's actually the supernatural but in the negative. <laughs> Their ability to influence your soul without them having to be with you. They can just call your name. And guess what? Things start working against you. There is diabolic intervention, not divine intervention. But that diabolic intervention did not just happen out of nowhere. Somebody, someone did. Meaning they unlocked the supernatural. But this is the negative side of it. Oh my God. A lot of people go for deliverance sessions. Go for deliverance what? Sessions. They want to be delivered. And demons will manifest. But they will go home still the same. After five years, they've been delivered, but they are the same. There is a huge difference between demonic manifestation and demons coming out. For somebody to receive a total deliverance, it is not just about the demon screaming. Let me tell you something. You guys don't know this, but most of you might, right? Do you know that in the spirit, hear me very well here, revelation is equals to light. So the more revelation, the more light. And the Bible says something. It says, this is just a side note. It says that light shone to darkness and Darkness comprehended it not. Darkness could not stand the light. Darkness could not contend with the light. Hence, it comprehended it not. It could not extinguish the light. Are we together? Now, what I wanted to say to you is, there are people who don't need deliverance in a form of out. They need more light. So the darkness that is in them does not, does not need out. So when it comes to deliverance, there are different types of deliverances. There is a deliverance by knowledge. That's what the Bible says, the just shall be delivered by knowledge. Then there's that deliverance that we kind of lay hands and cast out something. But there, it is actually us separating you, right? With what we call controlling, controlling demonic forces. But then again, there is deliverance that now comes by the amount of light you have. There are certain demons that can live your life without anybody laying their hand on you. That whenever they look at you, the amount of light that they see, they cannot contend. They cannot fight against you. That even when witches mention your name in certain places, whatever forces they are using, those forces will look at you and see the light and say, not there. Uh, the greatest weapon in the spirit is light. Uh, 
You can never unlock the supernatural until you understand the mystery of light. Remember, the Bible says we have been delivered from what? A kingdom of darkness. And we have been translated. We have been brought to the kingdom of light. Meaning the blood of Jesus was here or was shed for us for one thing. So that at the end we can find ourselves in light. Because light is the greatest. Light, oh my God, I wish I could talk about what I'm here for, but I think let me go deeper there. That's what the Bible says, and in him was light. So before God created anything, what he had inside of him was light. Oh, let me emphasize that. The Bible says, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. And of course, without the word, nothing was created that is created, right? And in him was light. And then it says, the light was the life of men. Meaning man does not have life until man is light. I don't know if you're getting it. That's why out of everything or anything else, Jesus said, you are the light. Say, unlocking the supernatural. The reason why believers today are anointed but powerless. <laughs> you can be anointed and powerless if you don't believe me, ask Saul. David could not kill Saul because Saul was anointed. But the Bible says that the house of Saul grew weak and weaker. Yet he was anointed. Anointing is not power. You can be anointed and be poor. You can be anointed and be afflicted in your body. You can be anointed by God and live like somebody who's not anointed. Oh my God. If you are anointed and you have no revelation, you will find yourself living a life that is annoying. You yourself, you're not happy with your life, but you know you are anointed. Light is the greatest in the kingdom. That's why one thing that drives the devil away is light. You can pray all you want, but if you have no light, which is revelation, demons will camp in your house. Witches will play hide and seek in your house. Monitoring spirits, you will be pulled at night when you are sleeping. What people think God wants to give them is cars, is houses, is all these things. The devil is a liar. What God wants to give you is light. <laughs> there are certain things that you ask God, but God will say, I gave you, read the Bible. Anything that God can give you is because he already gave you. Anything that God can give you is because he already gave you. So you are asking him for something that he already gave you. Hence, he cannot give it to you. But it is hidden in revelation. But remember, revelation equals to light. Angels don't appear to satisfy your curiosity. Angels are attracted to light. The more light in you, angels will just appear. You will bump to them and say, hey, sorry. Light. Because they are creatures of light. Say, talk to me, Apostle. Talk to me, Apostle. I need to wrap this. Hear what he's saying. He says, please show me where darkness lives. Show me the dwelling place of light. Light is one of the living creatures that a believer can use. A believer can use light. You can use light against whatever that is against you. Light. Do you know that light became the solution to solve the first ever problem in the realm of men? That's why we say light is the ultimate solution. The first problem that existed was not cancer. It was not HIV. It was not the spirit of poverty. It was darkness. And God said, let there be light. So darkness was conquered by light. And we know what darkness means. 
No witch can penetrate light. Never. No witch can stand against light. Never. Do you know why some people will apply for a job and they'll be called? You know what? You are the best candidate. You are, you are somebody that we are looking for. Please come for an interview tomorrow. And when the time comes for them to come to an interview, they are sleeping. And they wake up late and when they call, they tell, they tell the person, unfortunately, we found somebody. Do you know that at that time, something was weaponized, something supernatural was, I don't know how to say it to somebody to hear what I'm saying here. I wish I could say it in a better way that you guys will understand. Something was used against you. But the amount of light you have could not fight back. You are not poor. You have light problem. There is a certain level that when you get to, even poverty will pack its bags and say, I'm going. Nobody has to pray for you. Oh. Oh my God. Oh my God. I wish they could hear me. Paul said something. Listen, if you're not excited about if the word of God does not excite you, there is nothing that will excite you. If the only thing that excites you is receive your car, receive your miracle, receive, receive, receive this, receive that, then you are in problem. You are in trouble. Paul said, you gave to me. That's what he's saying, Paul. Not because I desired a gift. He is clearly telling them that I'm not in need. But you gave so that you, fruit can abound in your account. It was for your own good. When the queen of Sheba gave to Solomon, it was not because Solomon was poor. She was giving for your own good. Hence the Bible says, and Solomon blessed her ten times. Are we together? And he says, my God shall supply all your needs, not all our. They gave to him, but he doesn't say our needs. He says your needs. So the man is not in need. Because there was a, there was a revelation that the man had. One of the things that the enemy uses, he fries in the ignorance of believers. What is the supernatural? Maybe if we can define the supernatural so you guys understand. But I think the word on its own explains itself. Explains itself. Supernatural. It's natural, but it's super. So what, that does, what, what does that mean? It means above the natural. So when somebody is living, operating in the supernatural. They are operating in the above the natural. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So what limits you does not limit them. We are called to the supernatural. We are not invited to come and leave. We are to stay in there. Are we together? Whenever we are talking about the supernatural, write this one down quickly. The supernatural is a realm where heaven and earth intermingle. Once you are in the supernatural, heaven has no choice but to back you up. And every living creature on earth will back you up. Sun is a living creature. That's why you had people Back in the days, even these days, who are worshipping the sun? Okay, you're not hearing me. You're not hearing me. It's because they've realized something about the sun. Yes, that sun lives. is alive. Yes, uh -uh. Yes, yes, sun has ears. Yes, That's why the Bible says, and Joshua stood and he spoke to the sun. And said, hold your peace. Don't move until we finish our enemies. Yes, and the Bible says, and the sun stood still. Hey. It is never your duty to locate the ears of the sun. Yes, sir. Yes, your duty is to exercise your power over the sun. Yes, hey. The dominion that you have been given is not limited in the realm of men. Oh, yeah. oh come on, Christians. Do, do you know why we have schools? Or why I have schools. I have mentorship programs. It's because there are certain things that God put in me. There are certain things that I encountered. And God gave me a revelation that I can easily give somebody. Are we together? 
But I know that when it's given in the public, it will be a powerful revelation. But it will be given to a wrong audience. So some people just think you are talking. But when now it's done privately, that's why the disciples of Jesus, the 12, operated differently from the 72. Because Jesus had 72 disciples, remember. But the Bible says he called the 12 and he gave them power. They were all disciples, but their level of power was never the same. Because Jesus will tell this 12 something that he will not tell others. In the 12, he had Peter, John, James. That when he was transfigured, they witnessed it. They saw Moses. They saw Elijah. They heard a voice that the nine did not hear, did not see. And Jesus said, do not tell any man. They have a revelation that the nine don't have. They are zeal, they are desire, their willingness, their availability. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Cause them to know things that other was others. You see, people think God loves us all. So if God wants me to know, I will know. That is ignorance talking. Yes, sir. You went to school. Why didn't you say if education wants me to know, education will come to my mind? And now you think if God really wants me to know, God will make me know. God will let me know. God is not like that. He doesn't dance to your rhythm. The Bible says, seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. You know what your problem is? You want to knock and open. It says, knock and it shall be opened for you. You are not the one opening. And if you don't hear me here, I don't know where you will hear me. One of the reasons why I started seeking God in his word is because I understood that everything can be done, can be said. But when all is said and done, it will come back to the word. What makes you a powerful believer is not your ability to prophesy. But your ability to reveal Jesus with simplicity and clarity. Yes, Maybe I will just talk to the people on Zoom. If you are listening, wherever you are in the world, wherever you are in the world, put this one on your comment section now. Whether you're watching this now live or as a rebroadcast, Put it on your comment section right now. Unlocking the supernatural in my life. Personalize it. Unlocking the supernatural in my life. And watch what happens. The moment you believe that, the moment you subscribe to that, that the supernatural is being unlocked. Because what now happens is that the moment you are conscious of it, you are aware of it, you are one step closer. Let's continue because I need to quickly wrap it up. Witches, they know where darkness dwell. Darkness is the opposite of light. Meaning, whatever darkness has is actually from the light. But they had to add their nature into it. They are living creatures. They are things that we can speak to. Do you know ah, kalabrata kiakado? Do you know that there are people who are not thriving in life because ordinances, let me put it in this way, right? Because nature is speaking against them. <laughs> you are not making it because the clouds are speaking against you. You are not making it because the moon is speaking against you. Ah. Uh-uh. What I'm saying is very much biblical. Don't worry. I'm a man of the word. I will never teach you something that is not in the Bible. And I repeat, I will never teach you something that is not in the Bible. Are we together? Once you are in the supernatural and you understand what I'm saying, you become a dangerous believer. You slept. You were... Excited because you now have a new opportunity. You have, an op- you have an appointment, as a matter of fact, with the director of the company. 
And the day, actually, they, they saw you and they were very excited. And they told you, it's a done deal. Just come to the office, let's sign papers. You get there tomorrow, the guy, the woman that you're speaking to doesn't want to see you. They're not even happy to see you anymore. You didn't call them, you didn't do anything wrong. And they are now telling you, unfortunately, it cannot go on. The deal can't continue. Then you go, but yesterday we concluded. Yesterday was yesterday. That's what they tell you. What happened? Did you do something wrong? It's because one of the living creatures worked against you. And not because they volunteered to. It could be somebody, someone did them. And what works against most Christians in my walk with God that I've picked up is wind. There is nothing that witches, Satan uses that is more powerful than wind. Wind can be natural, wind can be supernatural, but hear me here. Wind, say wind. wind. Let's quickly pass by somewhere. I'm left with five minutes. Can you believe that? Go to the book of Job, 118. Kalushka paradia kazonta. The book of Job. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house. And it fell upon the young men and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. You're not hearing it. It, the wind was weaponized yes, against the children of Job. Yes, Notice, if you may, one person escaped. Yes, Why? Because it was not sent to the person who escaped. Amen. You're not hearing it, right? When I was younger, we went to a house of a woman who was a, a taxi owner. She was a very strong, firm believer in Christ. We went to pray in a house with other brothers, I believe we were three. It was during the day, it was not raining, it was not cloudy, it was very sunny. We got in, you know, back in the days, people used to have those room divides where they'll put pictures, family pictures, you know, framed pictures, but inside the room divide. So there'll be a glass and then inside there, they'll put those, so the TV will be in the middle. So she had that room divide, that kind of a room divide. We started praying. And as we were praying, 15 minutes in prayer, because she felt there's something wrong in her house, and she called us. At that time, we used to call ourselves prayer warriors. So our job at that time was to come to your house and pray. You are sick, we come, we pray. You have problems, we come and we pray. That was our job. So we went there and we prayed with brothers, with other brothers of mine in the Lord. As we were praying 15 minutes in prayer, all of a sudden, lightning came out of nowhere, went inside the house, passed the roof, entered where we are, lightning. No rain, no nothing. No clouds, no nothing. And as it entered the lightning, it went to the room divide. It hit the picture of that woman. And that picture uh, turned black. It was torn. Watch this. The glass broke, the one that was covering the room divide. The frame glass where her photo was broke. It hit her. We then realized by the Spirit of God that if we had not come for prayer, that lightning was sent to her. But as we were praying, the lightning was redirected. And if you are in Africa or in South Africa, you will know what I'm talking about. We have marketplaces where they sell lightning. It's not a joke. You can literally buy lightning here. Yeah? You can buy lightning. It's not a joke. You go, you say, I'm buying lightning. And they will tell you how to use it against somebody. It's not a joke. I'm not bluffing here. Just in case you think I'm joking. Are we together? So watch this by the Spirit of God. Watch this by the Spirit of God. If we were not there to pray, 
So prayer became a covering. Amen. And that testimony up to today is still a, one of the biggest testimonies that she has. Amen. So the lightning was not directed to us. Whoever summoned it called names, but the names that he or she wanted. So even for the sons and the daughters of Job, the target was not the one who escaped. How do you sit around people? Wind comes out of nowhere. Blows and hits the four corners of the house. Everybody dies and you are the one who is alive. It's because it was never sent against you. And you will understand what I'm saying because when you read the Bible, Job, he himself, he's the author of the book of Job. But in him writing the book of Job, whatever is happening now is happening before he wrote the book. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. So he does not know that whatever is happening in his life, God had a hand in it. Or maybe God agreed. God gave permission for it to happen. Oh, okay, let me put it in a way that you'll understand. So Satan went to God. He said, I want to try Job. God said, no problem, go ahead. And the first thing that Satan uses is wind. Come on now. So meaning wind can hear. That's why when you read the Bible in the book of Ezekiel chapter 37, and I would love to believe by the Spirit of God is verse 9, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken. The Bible says, and when the dry bones came together, notice if you may, then flesh came, but there was no breath. Yes, sir. And what did God say to the prophet? Speak to the four winds. Yes, sir. Speak to the four winds. Yes, Speak to the four winds. And I believe every Christian knows what four winds means. If you are a junior believer and you don't know the mystery or the teaching of four winds, you have a long way to go. And I'm not saying that just to shame you or anything like that. It's time to grow. Focus on kingdom mysteries. Focus on things that once you get a hold of them, you will fathom beyond human imagination. You will fathom things that are beyond human imagination. Hear me by the Spirit of God. God says, speak to the four winds. It was never the duty of the prophet to locate the ear of the wind. His duty is to speak. And notice, if you may, before he spoke to the four winds, he spoke to the bones. You tell me, where were ears here to hear his word? But the dry bones came together, a hip bone joined to the shoulder bone, a shoulder bone joined to the cranium, a cranium to the uh, finger bones. Watch this now. And it became a skeleton. And he began to speak now again. Ears were the last thing to come. Once you understand that it is never my duty to locate the ear of the object, the ear of the living creature, my duty is to speak. You have entered the supernatural. <laughs> Watch this now. It was never the duty of the prophet to locate the ear of the wind. When you then read the Bible, you realize, now you realize that God himself is saying, because after it happened, right? After the wind blew his house, I'm talking about the house where the children were, Job, right? That is chapter 1, chapter 2. But chapter 1 and chapter 2, he himself could not have understood it, even though he's the one who wrote it. But he understood it because God himself was saying, you have your side of your story, but let me tell you the side of my story. Whatever happened to you, the devil asked. <laughs> so he's then able to narrate the story. Because most of the things towards the end of his life, God was now telling him of mysteries and things that happened. That's why Job, when he now realized what had happened, right, he's asking for an interpreter. He said, if I had an interpreter to tell me what was happening, he's actually saying that if he knew what, would, what was happening behind the scene, there are certain things that he would not have done or said. But because he led somebody to give him understanding, he ended up doing certain things and saying certain things. Jesus is fasting. The devil knows Jesus is hungry. 
The devil says, if you are a son of God, turn this stone to become bread. Jesus does not say, Satan, are you out of your mind? Who have you seen turn a stone to become bread? But Jesus does not fight that. Oh, you're not hearing me. So Jesus does not fight that. Because if it was not possible, Jesus would say, this guy is bluffing. And the devil would not have asked Jesus to do it if the devil did not know that Jesus could do it. So he knew it's possible and Jesus knows about it. So turn this stone to become bread. You, come on, believers. Let's, let, let's move from being babies here. Let's mature. Let's mature a little bit. Let's get to higher dimensions a little bit. So Jesus does not say, but that does not make sense. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone. He's not arguing. He's not opposing the statement. Are we together? He's quoting Deuteronomy 8. He has a revelation. Now, what protects Jesus from that trap is revelation. He says, turn this stone to become bread. Meaning, speak to the stone. And Jesus had the ability. And we know that because when he was supposed to pay tax, he says to Peter, go to the sea. The first fish you catch, you'll find money. You can't tell me fish eat money. You can't tell me there are supermarkets in the water. Where did the money come from? The same way he told Peter the first fish you catch, it could have been the same way he changed the stone to become bread. Once you understand what I'm saying, even in your dreams, you will know I'm dreaming. You'll be in a dream like this and you can literally stand and say, this is a dream and you continue. We are called to the supernatural. No funny stuff. Yes, I'll give an example. I stood, it was on the 3rd of August. I stood uh, in the realms of the spirit. And I looked at the world like this. And as I looked at the world like this, I saw fire coming out from different places. I'm talking about building houses, forests, and all of that. I said to the angel that was with, was, was with me, what is this that I'm seeing? The angel said, this August, there shall be fire everywhere. Yes, and I said, why? And the angel said to me, because it's a month of fire. Mm -hmm. I said, what meaneth this? He says, God will release fresh fire. Mm -hmm. Are we together? There will, be re there will be revival on the earth that will start in this month. Mm -hmm. There is fire. Mentals are falling. Mm -hmm. But whatever you are seeing is more supernatural. Of course, you have conspiracy theorists who will tell you this, who will tell you that. Then I came to you when August began. And I said, that's said the Lord. There will be fire everywhere. Fire that we have, we, we'll be like, why fire like this? What, what's happening with fire? Are we together? Because it's the month of August. And the following day, there was fire somewhere. The following day, and all of a sudden, everywhere, you talk Canada, there's fire. Fire that they've never seen. You talk Spain, there's fire. You talk uh, USA, there's fire. We are not happy, but it was prophesied. If you can go back to the first week, you realize the apostle prophesied whatever is happening and said the fire will be crazy. Even September, I was shown September as I'm seeing the camera in front of me. And with some of my mentees in the mentorship program, I've already went to 2024. And it's not my first time. But how do you do that? I want you to understand that I'm not a prophet. I'm not a son of a prophet biologically. Meaning my father was never a prophet. I was a young man who was called by God in ministry. And the revelation I had with Jesus, it was then revealed to me I'm an apostle. So I'm not entitled to the prophetic. I was not born with the spirit of a prophet. But the amount of revelation that I have, that's why uh, if you find prophets prophesying, I honor prophets and I respect prophets of God. And you find me prophesying with them, you will conclude I'm a prophet too. You then you need to make a decision. Time to play is over. Just for you to be in church, church. No. You must hunger. That's what the Bible says. Desire spiritual gifts. Pharmaticals. The word spiritual there is the word pharmaticals. To be superior than men, yes, but little lower than God. In the civilization of the immortals, Pastor Brian. That dimension will vomit you if you have no light. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
But this is how it vomits you. The moment you access that dimension because of certain light and you don't grow in light, you'll be vomited. You say, but I used to prophesy. Yesterday I prophesied. How come today I can't prophesy? I was there, well, I was once there, where I prophesied, I think one time it was powerful, I think about 17 years ago, 18 years ago, close to 20 years ago. It was powerful when I was prophesying. And the next thing, boom, I could not prophesy. And I did not understand. I was praying, I was fasting. I thought the secret was in prayer or fasting. You can't pray to prophesy. Never. People who pray to prophesy are very ignorant and are the ones who can prophesy. And I'm saying that not because I'm trying to diminish anybody. No, I'm telling you the truth. You can't pray prophesying out. That's why Paul didn't say pray for it, he said desire it. But once you operate as if every problem is subject to prayer, you yourself, the ignorance that you are operating in, you need deliverance. The highest level of deliverance is not when you roll on the ground. It's when your ignorance is lifted. And some things, they don't just happen. You need a man by God's grace. So if we have things like this, that the Bible, we see people speaking to them. What is it that we don't know? Forget about the things we know. What is it that we don't know that is causing us to operate like mere men? The Bible says, ye are gods, but because you know not, you will die like me, amen. So, what will kill somebody who's a god is not God killing them, but it's because they don't know something. Your inability to access a certain amount, level of revelation is what will breed death. I don't know if you are, you are getting me here. So, you are dying not because you are meant to die. Some of us, our names, when they are mentioned in other places, the amount of light that's around us, even the living creatures that wants to be sent against us, they say, not that one. If you are still with me, wave your hand. Some of you today, you will see angels. Today, not, not tomorrow. You will close your eyes to sleep. It will not take you two seconds, two minutes. It will be as if when you close your eyes here, they are, your eyes are opening some way. You will, you will have internal visions. You will have external visions. And if you are in here, whether you are a seer, whether you are a dreamer, something is about to happen. If you are a believer, you are a child of God, Deborah, if you are in here and you are a child of God, something is about to happen. 